This brings us to the final speaker here today. Last but not least, Nicolas Lotz, who is the COO of compliance solution provider Chevron Group. How much, Nicolas, do the proposed RG regulations add to the compliance burden? Yeah. Uh, as I said, so especially the, the strict requirements for the mandatory deposit limits will put, put an, an heavy operational and compliance burden on the licensees. So with those strict limits, the CKSA in principle eliminates the possibility for providers to apply a risk-based um, approach with their player protection measures. So um, that means in general, um, operators not only need to adapt operational procedures, but also have uh, to um, um, or have development effort that should not be underestimated. Um, so at least, um, or for example, they can implement the solutions from Mindway AI or CDDN, um, as we discussed um, earlier, or as we've seen uh, earlier uh, today. So the planned changes will will um, also require additional um, personal resources, um, as for example, direct contact with the with the player is required. Um, this increases the risk for compliance breaches and also the need for proper training and, and monitoring. Um, we don't know so far about any grace period, so it might be the case that this, these new requirements need to be implemented in the short term. And that means to summarize that addiction prevention is, as in, in other regulations we have seen, such as Germany or Spain, of major importance to regulate, uh, regulators nowadays, and, and operators need to get used to these new kind of of, let's say, strict um, requirements. Thank you, Nicola. Things are not exactly becoming simpler, if I understand you well. So leading to the second question here, Nicolas, what can operators do to keep their compliance burden more manageable from your, from your perspective? Yeah, so I, one key measure, I would say, is to keep uh, the, uh, the compliance for manageable is to establish an internal audit structure um, for the relevant compliance areas. This reduces the risk um, um, of fines and also the liability reduces the liability of the of the management. Um, it helps to continuously improve um, the respective compliance measures and also brings an extra line of defense um, for the operator's compliance management. Um, so how do we um, from Chevron perform those internal audits. So first of all, we are using an, an uh, ISO standard called ISO, ISO um, 19011, and those ISO standards uh, always rely to a PDCA circle. So um, the first step for such an audit would be that we define the audit scope together with the client, uh, get the necessary information, and um, and then after this has been discussed, we prepare a proper audit, uh, audit program, which um, includes a risk assessment, which defines the frequency and the level of detail um, of the audit to be performed, uh, for example, annually, biannually, or uh, even quarterly uh, for certain compliance areas if it's needed. Um, after that, we prepare an audit plan um, for the specific audits, for the specific audit areas, including the time planning and the detailed questionnaire, for example. And um, yeah, normally it starts with a website check where we check uh, when it comes to data protection, for example, if the cookie content are conf uh, configured correctly or when it comes to addiction prevention, if the necessary information is displayed. Um, at the next step, we check for completeness, which means that um, we, we check if the necessary measures required by law or regulations have been implemented and at the next step, check for effectiveness. So if the measures um, which have been implemented um, are working properly. Um, for example, if you have an, a monitoring system, an alerting system, we check how many alerts uh, you receive in a certain time period. And if it's too much, you can't handle those, those, those alerts, then maybe this is not configured correctly. So the, um, the system is not work, uh, working um, effectively. Um, we perform interviews with employee, uh, employees and also the management to check if um, there is compliance awareness. And um, after all that um, um, audit um, processes, we prepare an audit report with all the audit findings and, and define then with the um, with the client a mitigation plan how um, to solve the, the findings we had. And we perform uh, those audits in different areas, um, 
in general regulation, of course, in the Netherlands, then uh, anti-money laundering, player protection, or addiction prevention, um, and, um, and data protection. So what are the advantages of outsourcing internal audits um, um, to us is for, um, definitely that you have access to skills and experience um, a team of internal auditors, which are industry experts. Um, there's no need for in-house hiring and, uh, and training costs in order to build up your own internal audit department. Um, of course, there are flexible pricing models um, where we can align with specific, uh, specific needs of uh, your organization. Um, it's easy to scale uh, the audit efforts based on the business growth and uh, also it enables um, operators to adapt to changing regulatory landscapes as we have it at the moment without major disruption. So all in all, uh, it allows the organization to concentrate on core business functions and reduce the operational and compliance risks um, for the licensee. Okay. More manageable here is uh, the key I hear. Uh, thank you, Nicolas. Last question to you, Nicolas. Is your solution also usable in, in other jurisdictions? Yes, yes um, indeed it is. Um, as I said uh, already, the uh, internal audits are based on an international standard, the ISO 19011 standard. So all the audits are always structured in the same way and so are comparable and uh, also for external stakeholders. Um, they can be seamlessly integrated into an existing compliance management system. So if you are um, having an, an, a compliance according to ISO 37301, for example, then this would do perfectly um, into that, but um, also in, in, in other, with other standard, uh, standards, it's um, possible to integrate. So um, most providers are fam familiar with these audit structures from their existing management system, for example, the ISO 27001 information security or the ISO 19001 for quality management is um, is quite well known, and um, so they are familiar from uh, for the structures and how we perform those audits. Um, we have a pool of internal and external compliance experts in various jurisdictions, such as the UK, Germany, Spain, uh, Italy, or even Malta, and can therefore um, always uh, perform the audits with um, with special specialists for these specific jurisdictions. Um, especially in the in the EU, where we have similar legal requirements to the EU regulation, um, GDPR or directive um, when it comes to anti-money laundering, um, this uh, is of course important. And uh, we also see that direct more and more start to communicate with each other, some more, some less, uh, and, and therefore learn from each other. And we have similar requirements and regulations in different jurisdictions. So with our approach, um, we include these aspects in the individual audit programs and minimize therefore then the effort required to conduct internal audits for various jurisdictions. Thank you, Nicolas. Uh, 